then we have hardware theft vandalism and failure so hardware theft is definitely you know it hardware theft is about the stealing of someone steals your hardware someone steals your computer mobile or laptop uh, it is the act of stealing digital equipment so because we rely on computers and mobile devices a lot so everything is stored on the or on our mobile or computer devices so we definitely require some mechanism to protect our computers or devices from theft vandalism and failure so hardware vandalism is the act of defacing or destroying the digital equipment and so it uh, hardware failure can be because of uh, many reasons your hardware is uh, old uh, it is uh, some natural or man made disasters can destroy your hardware electric power problems can be there there can be errors in the programs or apps that will fail your hardware so you can protect your hardware by using these mechanisms so you can add physical access controls on your desktops that is you apply locks uh, uh, locked doors uh, and you keep your windows locked you keep your doors locked where you have computer your systems and computers for example in a company and uh, you can have some alarm system that someone is taking your system so the alarm starts beeping then physical security devices that is cables and locks are applied so no one can open up your uh, devices uh, in in your labs if you might have noticed your uh, devices are uh, being locked in uh, uh, being locked the cpu is locked the uh, cables are locked then uh, uh, apart from that you can also add a device tracking app so you can if somebody still steals your hardware so there is a tracking application with it so you can track who where is your device gone and nowadays we have uh, this uh, tracking application on our mobile phones as well and then we have hardware failure safeguards uh, to protect our computers from hardware failure we can use surge protectors we can use ups we can use uh, we can duplicate the computer components and we can use by using fault tolerant computers nowadays we have such good computers which are fault tolerant which can uh, tolerate high intensity electric power but still we should and phir bhi nahi hota then we should what is the ultimate solution backing up of uh, everything so backing up that is the ultimate safeguard uh, we can when we will have taken the backup of our system we know that everything in our computer is uh, even if it is stolen we know that it is being saved on some uh, uh, backup there we have the backup of it so backup is it actually it is actually a duplicate of a file a program or a media that can be used if the original data is lost damaged or destroyed so to protect data loss caused by hardware software information theft we can backup the computer and mobile devices regularly so if we have taken the backup uh, it means that we have made its copies so in the case of system failure or the disk uh, or the uh, corrupted files we can restore the files by copying the backup from the original location on the computer or mobile device so if you choose to backup uh, locally be sure that you have uh, taken a good backup of them so uh, off sites backups can be also taken which are stored in a location separate from the computer or mobile device site so for example cloud storage is an off site backup you can take backup on the same system you can take the backup on some external hard drive you can take the backup on an opt on a cd but make sure your backup media is in a fireproof and a heat proof uh, place or it should be off site off site is a very good option that is uh, it is a location which is separate from where you typically store or use computer or mobile device so keeping backup copies off site minimizes the chance that a single disaster will destroy both original and backup media so if your original Uh, data is uh, and the offsite backup is at is at the same place then definitely if uh, there is some natural disaster both will be lost so offsite location can be a safe deposit box at a bank you can take a locker 
uh, you can uh, place it at cloud storage or you can take the cloud backup of your things so cloud storage provides storage to uh, customers along with some synchronization services but uh, usually it has very small uh, space you uh, have to buy more space so by contrast cloud backup provides only backup and retrieval services but generally provides continuous data protection and so if you are opting for cloud Uh, because it will save you the cost of maintaining hardware because if you uh, have not any cloud storage then what will you do you will keep on buying uh, a new hard drive every time you have to take the backup so if you have a cloud storage so you don't have to buy a hardware uh, every time so you don't have to maintain that hardware you don't because hardware can be again uh, it can be stolen so you can take the backup of the programs available for many resources there are operating systems that include a backup program there are backup devices external hard drives that that can include the backup programs there are standalone backup tools as well and then this cloud storage uh, providers they will offer you backup services so you can have a cloud backup Uh, of the software on your computer that will back up all your files on the cloud whenever they are being changed so uh, you can take the backup of your things so there are uh, four types of typically four types of backup that is uh, a full backup or differential backup an incremental backup or a selective backup and then we have a continuous uh, data protection as well which is a fifth type of data protection and the sixth one is the cloud backup so uh, we can also uh, use these some there are some users that implement this three generation backup policy and that is grandparent parent and the child and uh, and the, the child is the most recent copy of the file parent is the second oldest copy of the file and the grandparent is the oldest copy of the file so whenever you will make uh, a change make a change that is the most recent copy so it will become the uh, it will uh, when uh, it will be the most recent copy so when a new backup is performed this child will become the parent the parent will become the grandparent and the media on which the grandparent copy was stored may be erased and may be reused for a future backup whereas full uh, backup is um, the one in which you will i have taken the full backup of your things differential is a partial backup and you have taken some uh, in, in that you have taken in parts incremental backup is also taken in increments and selective backup is you select something and you uh, leave the rest and uh, then we have uh, uh, the continuous data protection in which you are continuously taking the backup of your uh, whenever you have taken made, made some changes you are that is being continuously being done and then the uh, backup is on the cloud so let's see them in more detail okay in full backup you copy all the files on the media in the computer it is a fast test recovery method all the files are saved because you have taken the you have made a copy of all the data on the computer but the backup time will be a lot because you are taking uh, the full backup every time so this is a disadvantage then differential backup will copy only the files that have changed since the last full backup so copying only the files that are changed so it is a fast backup method because you are copying only the files that have changed so it will require minimal storage space to backup but recovery time is consuming because the last full backup plus the differential backup is required then we have incremental backup which will copy only the files that have changed since last full or incremental backup it is also the fast test backup method it will require minimal storage to backup only the most recent changes are being saved and then recovery is most time consuming because the last full backup and all incremental backups are required since the last full backup was done then selective backup is that you will choose which folder and file is to be required in a backup so it is giving you a fast backup method and it provides some great flexibility and but it is difficult to manage individual file backups you may forget 
which files you have copied and which files you have not copied it is least manageable of all the backup methods uh what you you do you you sometimes you use the hard drive uh, you use the usb to do the selective backup ke thodi bahut cheeze bas copy karni hai then we have continuous data protection in which all the data is backed up whenever a change is made uh, it is the only real time backup and very fast recovery of data is there that is uh, uh, whenever you have done a ch- small change the data is being backed up so it is very expensive and requires a great amount of storage Uh, it is usually being done on your phones uh, then uh, if you have turned on the auto backup uh, every time you have done a change it will be uh, updated then cloud backup so files are backed up into the cloud as they change so when the files are being changed they are being backed up so cloud backup provider maintains backup hardware files may be retrieved from anywhere with an internet connection on any device so the disadvantage is that it will require an internet connection otherwise files are marked for backup whenever you get online so uh, in that case in cloud backup you will require internet connection whereas uh, in others you you manually have to do the uh, backup so here you can set the time duration as well when to do the backup wireless security is required because we are using uh, wifi a lot these days there are billions of home and business users who have laptop smartphones and mobile devices to access internet and to do the communication on internet so we are using wireless devices a lot so this wireless uh, devices Uh, using of uh, usage of wireless devices it acts uh, it poses some additional security risk uh, because everything is being is now wireless so you at your houses use wireless home network at university use wireless networks at public spots you may use uh, public wireless uh, hotspots or uh, uh, your schools universities have wireless network so you can use wifi to access so uh, some um, although this wireless access provides many convenience to users because you don't have to use uh, the wire to attach uh, your system to the network it will put, uh, pose some additional security risks because some perpetrators they will connect to other wireless networks to gain free internet access you uh, they may try to access organizations confidential data so to access a wireless network the individual must be in range of the wireless network so some intruders they intercept and monitor communications whenever uh, you are trying to send something uh, so some someone will intrude into it and your data will be lost so others connect to the network through some unsecured wireless access point or a router to steal your data so it is uh, whenever you are connected wirelessly again communicate communication on a wireless network is not secure ethics and uh, society they tell us that there are some technology ethics whenever you are uh, using the computers and internet so these are some moral guidelines that govern the use of computers mobile devices information systems and related technologies so uh, as uh, powerful technology computers and mobile devices can be used for both good and bad intentions so we have some standards that determine whether an action is good or bad uh, so which it is known as ethics computer ethics or information and technology ethics and so uh, technologies uh, ethics are the moral guidelines that will uh, tell us what to use and what not to use so there are frequently discussed areas uh, that tells us the unauthorized usage of computers unauthorized access of computers mobile devices and networks uh, so this technology ethics also tell us that we should not steal the software we should not do soft uh, software piracy uh, we should uh, not steal someone's information uh, we should uh, keep uh we should respect the intellectual property rights of someone for example someone has written a, a document uh, online so we should protect their uh, we should not steal their information we should not use the, it with our name 
so information accuracy is also a concern these days um, uh, uh, because uh, not everything that you will find on the internet is correct so uh, do not assume that because information is on the web it is correct be aware that the organization that is providing access to the information may not be the creator of the information for example the wikipedia everyone is contributing to it so the wikipedia is uh, giving you the access to the information he is not a creator people are writing uh, that information so everything is not authentic whatever you see on the internet so in addition to the concerns about the accuracy of computer inputs some individuals or organizations they also raise the questions about uh, how of about the usage of computers uh, the outputs of the computers as well for example users can digitize photos and then they can add and remove the images or from the internet so we have intellectual property rights to uh, to keep our things uh, to uh, keep our things unique so it will it refers to unique and original works for example you have written an article on the internet you have an idea you had an in invention or you had you had an art or writing so it is uh, your company has some uh, logo your product has some name so it is your intellectual property right so these are the rights to which the creators are entitled for their work so there are certain issues uh, surrounding inter intellectual property rights because many of these works are available digitally uh, accessible to everywhere so what people do they uh, they access that uh, content uh, because digitally it is available to everyone at every place so they can redistribute it they can uh, alter it without your permission and they can distribute it to anyone around the world so uh, there is a digital rights manager management uh, strategy which is designed to prevent illegal distribution of uh, these artworks mu movies music and other digital content whereas a copyright gives artists authors and creators exclusive rights to uh, duplicate publish and sell their material uh, so copyright will protect uh, you, uh, your expression your things um, uh, so a, a common infringement of copyright is piracy where people illegally copy the software and music so this uh, this uh, should be uh, discouraged because uh, um, in many areas in the copyright are not clear with respect to the law because copyright gives the public fair use to co the copyrighted material so this uh, digital rights management strategy it tells you uh, what to copy and what not to copy so it at every with every song with every uh, document there is written that you can uh, with every software there is written that you should not illegally distribute them and uh, you might have seen it with some of the movies that you see Uh, then there is a code of conduct which is a written guideline that determines whether an application a specification is ethical or unethical which is allowed or not allowed so this sample uh, th this I this it code of conduct is usually written uh, uh, with every uh, with every in every and in every company uh, and it is distributed to the employees so this focuses on acceptable use of technology how you can use the computers how you can use emails so employers and uh, the you know uh, the institutes the companies organizations they specify standards ethical standards how to use uh, it code of con uh, conduct and then they will distribute them to you for example you might know that you should uh, not use um, uh, your uh, emails to uh, harm people uh, for, uh, just look at this sample it code of conduct uh, so technology may not be used to harm other people employees may not meddle in others files employees may not uh, may use technology for their uh, purpose but for which they have been authorized technology may not be used to steal technology may not be used to bear false witness employees may not copy or use software illegally employees may not use others technology resources without authorization they may not use others intellectual property as their own etc and there are lots of other it code of conduct 
then there's a concept of green computing uh, what we usually do we uh, waste things a lot we waste the resources a lot so for example electricity and paper while when while we are using the technology so green computing it involves reducing the electricity and environmental waste while using computers mobile devices and related technologies uh, so personal computers displays printers and other devices should comply with the guidelines of energy star program you might have seen uh, at your laptop there is an energy star program which shows that uh, you you should this this device conserves energy so uh, conservation of energy means your, your computers and devices will comply with the energy star program uh, and you will not leave a computer device running overnight so you will conserve energy so you will turn off monitor printer and other devices when they are not in use so the um, uh, united states uh, department of agency and uh, protection agency it, they have developed this energy star program to help reduce the amount of electricity used by the computers so uh, this program encourages manufacturers to create efficient devices so if there is an energy star displayed at your laptop it is um, uh, because uh, it uh, the it shows that your device uh, reduces the amount of electricity used by your computer so uh, this uh, it shows that your manufacturer has created your uh, the, uh, that energy efficient device so it for it means that whenever you are not working your computer or device will be uh, switched to sleep or power saver mode uh, after such uh, inactive minutes or hours so computers and devices that meet this energy star guideline they have this energy star label uh, on it so organizations can implement uh, so okay you and can also reduce environmental waste uh, by uh, by reducing the electrical waste uh, by using paperless methods to communicate using email instead of using papers recycle paper and buy recycle paper recycle toner in cartridges we what we usually do we throw it but we can recycle them uh, we can recycle computers mobile devices printers and other devices we can telecommute uh, use video conferencing and voice or uh, uh, voice of or over in voice over in from, uh, internet protocol for meeting instead of going uh, some somewhere uh, physically we can consolidate servers by using virtualization we can purchase high efficient energy equipments uh, using sleeping modes uh, by computers devices with low power consumption processor and power supplies computers we should buy computers which uh, have very low consumption when possible use outdoor to cool the data center or computer facility instead of uh, switching on the uh, electricity sector sector so these are uh, the some of the energy conservation and reducing environmental waste then we have information privacy information privacy refers to the rights of individuals and companies to deny or restrict the collection usage and dissemination of information about them so organizations often use huge databases to store records such as employee records medical records um, everything online so there is a lot of data which is personal and confidential which is accessible only to it should be accessible only to the authorized users what we do uh, we sign into the websites and these websites are actually collecting data about us so that they can customize advertisements and they can send us their personalized email messages so there are some employers that are monitoring our computer usage and they are monitoring the email messages as well so uh, there uh, our data our information is very much private and we don't want our information to be uh, used so what we have to do we should not uh, sign in uh, at everywhere we should not give our private information everywhere so whenever we uh, fill out any printed form uh, whenever we sign up for any service online uh, on any social media whenever we register for any product warranty so it will uh, get the information from us and it will save the information in the database so every time we will click on an advertisement uh, our information will be entered into the database so what they actually do they uh, sell our information 
with they sell the they may share the contents uh, with other marketing agencies so you might have noticed your email is all the time flooded with uh, spam emails why because you might have signed in some some time in your life on the website uh, when you might have so while searching online you might have added your information uh, so even if you enter your preferences it is being saved so whenever you will uh, you will try to you will try to search uh, another time so you might have noticed that the same information is being uh, sh the same information so uh, about your dislikes and likes the same websites will be opened uh, according to your personal choices so these are some marketing strategies and to uh, which claim that information in this way lowers overall selling costs which will uh, lower the overall prices